Good evening, I'm Hiba Ahmed and this is an edition of news from Belsan TV English with the latest news from Somalia and across the world. These are some of our top news headlines. Somali army applauded for largest security operation in five years against Al-Shabaab. Mayor Madale warns peddlers involved in drug trafficking in Mogadishu. And UK provides relief assistance for victims of drought as farming looms in Somalia. Welcome to the broadcast. Narcotics and other abuse substances have been snapped by police in Mogadishu during the operation targeting drug traffickers in the city. The operation led by the new mayor of Mogadishu, Yusuf Hussein Madali, is part of efforts by the local administration to curb crime and drug abuse in the capital. Police in Mogadishu have today seized bang and other abuse substances during raid conducted in the capital. The operation was led by the new mayor of Mogadishu and the Benadir Regional Administration, Yusuf Madale, who recently vowed to curb crime in the city. In a joint operation led by officers from the Criminal Investigations Department, the detectives raided the house and other dens following intelligence reports and managed to recover the outlawed substances. Mr. Madale said they have arrested some suspects who are now awaiting arraignment in court. The police nabbed narcotics including bang and local med alcohol during the operation. City authorities believe the increase in crime, especially those conducted by the criminal gang dubbed Yalwero, who have terrorized the city residents. Briefing the journalist in Mogadishu, Mr. Madale warned that the renewed war on drug dealers will not spare anyone, irrespective of their standing in the society. <laughs> We will not allow this town to be a safe haven for immorality. We will act decisively on Iyalwero group and the drug peddlers. Action will be taken against those producing and smuggling alcohol, bang and other narcotics. Mogadishu has seen a rise in the sale of outlawed substances. The Somali police force says they are now pursuing the masterminds in the sale to protect the youth, learners and other members of the society who are victims of the drug abuse. The new commissioner of Wadaji district in Mogadishu has vowed to enhance security operations after a spike in crime rates in the district. Speaking in Wadajid, Commissioner Ahmed Abdullahi Afrah has promised residents of their safety as police plan to double efforts to reduce acts of crime within the district. The government will conduct serious security operations at Wadajid district in Mogadishu to end the insecurity that has left at least one person dead under mysterious circumstances suspected to be fueled by land conflicts in a span of one month. The new Wadajir District Commissioner Ahmed Abdullahi Afra has announced a 24-hour police patrol that will be conducted at the district to weed out the goons believed to have staged various forms of crime, thereby stalling economic activities in the area. <laughs> at the districts that saw political, religious and security leaders engage with locals, Mr. Afra announced that police will conduct serious operations against idlers found roaming within the village shopping center. The district commissioner urged all youth without jobs to either start small business or engage in meaningful economic engagements. <laughs> We have always been people who stand against the wrongdoers. These young people armed with knives and are under the influence of drugs will face the full force of the law. Please support us in ending this menace.
The new security measures were announced after months of uproar from locals in the districts and other parts of Mogadishu, decrying armed criminals who attacked them at night, robbing them of their valuables before they flee in darkness. <laughs> The cabinet has commended the recent military operations conducted by the Somali National Army in parts of Southwest and Galmuduk states. Chaired by the Prime Minister of the Federal Government of Somalia, Hamza Abdibare, the ministers have agreed to institutionalize the fight against the insurgents to eliminate the group altogether. The Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia, Hamza Abdi Bari, on Thursday shared the weekly cabinet meeting in the capital, Mogadishu. The gathering ended with bold and strong outcomes of speeding up nationwide operations against Al Shabaab militant group. The Council of Ministers agreed the formation of a task force for coordination and fulfilling anti money laundry and countering the Financing Terrorism Act law as well as successful counter-terrorism strategies. The cabinet has agreed that the federal government of Somalia will nationalize public revolution against the Islamic militant. The cabinet has agreed that the federal government of Somalia will nationalize public revolution against the Islamic militant and will transform preventing countering violent extremism program into national agency in order to defeat the terrorist ideology. The Somali National Army announced on Wednesday the completion of the first phase of a military camp in Iran region, liberating almost 30 villages and killing over 200 militants. Security forces have opened main supply routes connecting key towns, including Bulaburde and Beledwain, which had been disconnected by road for many years by the militant. Al-Lahle, Norfanah, Berhane, Bardere, Bo'o, and Garasiani are among many areas where security operations are underway. Since the beginning of the operation dubbed Wagbari II, the Somali National Army, with the support of the local militias, managed to capture more than 30 areas and killed over 200 militants in large-scale operations across the country, according to government sources. The U.S. Africa Command has applauded what it called the largest security operation in five years against Al-Shabaab, which the Somali government declared a success on Wednesday. The Somali forces have been fighting members of the militant group Al-Shabaab in Southwest State and Galmuduk States. The United States Command in Africa, popularly known as AFRICOM, has applauded the largest security operation in five years against the Al-Shabaab group by combined Somali and African forces. The U.S. will continue to support Somali and Atmis partners in defending Al-Shabaab terrorists who threaten the peace and stability of Somalia, read in part a statement from AFRICOM. The Somali National Armed Forces have conducted recently successful operations in Abure, Yasoman, Po'o, and Sindako in Hiran and Galgadud regions where the Al Shabaab militants have been defeated. In coordination with the federal government of Somalia, US Africa Command said it conducted an airstrike against ISIS Somalia after the attack partner forces in a remote location near Timirche, some 140 kilometers southeast of Bosaso. We continue to apply pressure on terrorist groups and assist our Somali partners in disrupting their operations, said the U.S. Army Brigadier General Miguel Castellanos, the Deputy Director of Operations of Africa, in a statement. He added, we continue our support to rid Somalia of the likes of ISIS and Al-Shabaab. According to AFRICOM, the assessment has it that there were no civilians injured or killed as a result of the attack. When the airstrike occurred, U.S. forces were in the area in order to advise and assist Somali and partner forces. The U.S. Africa Command continues to support the Somali government by strengthening its security forces and promoting regional security, stability, and prosperity. Concurrently, the command is building enduring relationship and strategic alliances in East Africa to address looming challenges and align activities by near-peer competitors. The U.S. government has said it will continue to provide support to Somali efforts and counter violent extremism in the country. The U.K. government will provide life-saving aid to tens of thousands of people facing worsening humanitarian crises in the country. 
A new 22.8 million euros package of aid will help UN agencies and charities step up humanitarian support to people in desperate need in Somalia. In countries, there is some good news. As incomes have grown, government expenditures on the education... The UK Development Minister Vicky Ford has announced a new package of support for people affected by the worst drought in decades in Horn of Africa. In a statement while speaking at an event on the humanitarian crisis unfolding in the Horn of Africa at the UN General Assembly in New York, Ford announced 22.8 million euros to enable the UN and other NGOs to continue life-saving assistance through cash support, access to water and sanitation services, as well as delivery of highly specialized health and nutrition treatment. Minister Ford called on the international community to act now to avert disaster as concerns rise that a projected famine in Somalia could be worse than in 2011 when a quarter of a million people lost their lives. Minister Ford said in a statement, the drought in the Horn of Africa is one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. Almost half of Somalia's population is in dire need of help, with 300,000 people focused to be in famine by October if assistance is not provided immediately. She added in her statement that the UK is playing a leading role in the international response to the crisis, where she said we are providing vital life-saving food security, health, nutrition and water support to half a million people across Somalia backed by the funding announced today. The statement further read, if we are to avoid a repeat of the catastrophic drought which saw a quarter of a million people die in Somalia a decade ago, the international community must act now. This, this package of support takes the UK's total humanitarian health and nutrition funding for Somalia this financial year up to 52.8 million euros. The UK has allocated a total of 156 million euros in humanitarian support for crises in East Africa during this financial year. The UK has allocated a total of 156 million euros in humanitarian support for crises in East Africa during this financial year. The United Arab Emirates has appointed a new ambassador to Somalia. The new envoy was part of a number of new UAE ambassadors to diplomatic missions who have been sworn in before President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zaid Al Nahyan. The United Arab Emirates UAE has appointed new ambassador to Somalia. The new envoy was part of a number of new ambassadors to diplomatic missions who have been sworn in before President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zaid Al Nahyan. Mr. Ahmed Juma al rumaythi has been designated as the UAE ambassador to the Federal Republic of Somalia. He replaces Ambassador Mohammed Ahmed al Othman, who has been the Emirates diplomatic to Mogadishu. President Sheikh Mohammed wished the new ambassadors the new envoy success in his missions to consolidate the relations of friendships and cooperation between Somalia and UAE. The president urged them to work tirelessly to provide Emirati citizens in those countries with all means of comfort and care for their affairs. The president said that the UAE is witnessing a new development phase in which it gives great importance to its partnerships and economic relations with various countries of the world and it displaces great responsibilities on its diplomatic missions abroad. He stressed his confidence in the ability of the new ambassadors to carry out these responsibilities, express the UAE policy and expand the base of their interest in the countries in which they represent the UAE. The new ambassadors pledge their loyalty to the UAE to place its interest over any other considerations while performing their diplomatic tasks with a high sense of honesty, integrity and confidentiality. Present at the swear-in ceremony were General Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Interior, and Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Presidential Court. Somalia and the UAE have long had diplomatic ties. Still, relations soared when the UAE signed an agreement in 2016 to further develop and operate port of Berbera in Somaliland in which resulted in the 2018 seizure of nearly 10 million from an Emirati plane in Mogadishu. 
following the closely watched presidential election in May. Outgoing Somali Prime Minister Mohamed Hussein Roble flew to Dubai to personally deliver the cash and apologize for the seizure. President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud visited the UAE in June. Nairobi's Isli neighborhood, which is largely inhabited by Somalis living in Kenya's capital, is attracting international business as the neighborhood becomes a leading shopping destination in East Africa. International companies are now scrambling for the multi-million business in Isli. The ever-growing trade in Isli is attracting international companies as everyone wants to get share of the multi-million business in this Somali-controlled estate. Led by their head of asset finance, Kennedy Nyakomita, Diamond Trust Bank met the business community today in a bid to penetrate this market. Nyakomita asked the community to work with the DTB, citing that the bank is majorly owned by a Muslim, thus cares for the needs of the inhabitants of Isli. He also argued that the diaspora department of the bank will make it easy to do business across the world. Uh the diaspora banking is having in the US, we have a big captive market. So we want to put systems in place. If you want to keep your money here in Kenya, in East Africa, because we are an East African bank, whether it's Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, Burundi, you work with DTB. If you are in Dubai, we have HBL, you work with HBL. And through the US, we can provide you what is called diaspora services. How did you manage to attract all the people from Nairobi and other parts of Kenya to come and buy goods from here? Area member of County Assembly Mohammed Kadar requested the bank to give back to the society and carry out cleaning exercise within the estate. Uh, we have a lot of challenges here which stakeholders we need them also to partner us. We have a mess of garbage dumping, which is sabotaged by cartels, and some is by the county. I want also you to join us to solve that mess, because we need a partnership from the community, county government, and the stakeholders, banks, and other institutions, and the business people. It's Lee boost of over 70 malls, each having 300 shops. It is one of the fastest growing estates within Nairobi. It provides 30% of the total revenue of Nairobi City County annually. Despite grappling with insecurity and garbage, Isli is among the top revenue earners for the Kenyan government. Yusuf Hassan is the area member of parliament. He won his fourth term in office last month. And those are some of our top stories for this hour. This is Darsan TV English Broadcast with me, Hibak Ahmed. Until we meet again, enjoy the rest of your viewing.